Hi! Welcome to part 4 of the Hat in Time Blue Rift tutorial series. In this tutorial, I will be going over how to make new parts of the level. First off, I'm going to start this tutorial by reminding you to save often. This editor is prone to crashing. It's not as bad as it used to be, but it is still prone to doing so every now and then. So make sure that you save whenever you get the chance. In order to save, you go up to this icon, which will then let you save the level. Call this level whatever you want. You can call this a uh, tutorial riff. You can call it whatever, it doesn't really matter what it's called. Now keep in mind, unlike most programs, Control S will not save your map. I learned this the hard way when I started out. You have to click this button up here. There is no shortcut for it, unfortunately. So I'm now going to show you a part of the editor that I didn't show off before. If you go up to this button next to the Kismet icon, the green K, you, can, you will be able to open the content browser. This allows you to access all of the assets that a Hat in Time has. Assuming that you're not going to create custom assets for your Blue Rift, which we do not need to right now, then we are going to use the content browser to browse for existing assets inside of Hat in Time. When you click the button, it will bring up this window. I, cur I usually put this on a separate monitor, just for organization's sake, but not everybody has a separate monitor, so, so you don't need to do that if you do not have a second monitor. Instead, you can resize it to whatever your desired size is. Over here you can change how it displays certain information. You can change the zoom of the editor. And then you can choose the size of the thumbnails. I usually keep it at 128. I think this is usually the best option, but but everybody will have their own preferences. Over here is your mods folder where all of the assets for your mods will be stored. We, we can close this for now. Editor Cooked PC is the folder where all of the assets to a hat in time are stored. Just clicking on this folder will open it. There is a lot of stuff in here. If you click this arrow, you can open it, and it will open all of these different subfolders if you need to find something very specific. But I usually don't do this. Instead, I usually use the search bar. There are different types of objects. The default ones displayed here are animation sets, material, material instances, materials, particle systems, skeletal meshes, sound cues, static meshes and textures. I'm gonna go, I'll go over these real quick. Animation sets refer to types of objects that refer to different sets of animations for different characters. Textures are image files that can then be turned into materials which can then be placed on objects to give it a, to give it a look. Material instances are variants of materials which are, which is a little bit outside the scope of this video. Particle systems will let you do particle effects such as the bubbles in the blue rift. Skeletal meshes are usually characters, but they can not but they can be things other than that as well. Sound cues are sound files that can be played in the level. Static meshes are objects that get placed in the level that do not move. They are the level geometry. However, they can be moved with matinee, which we will go over in a different tutorial. Check the static mesh box so that you can filter by static meshes. Now, you could scroll through this manually, but that would take forever, as there are thousands of meshes in the base game. So let's say we want to get blocks to use in our blue rift. Specifically, the blue rift assets are called secret. If you type in secret into the search bar, you will find most of the assets relating to the blue rift objects. You have squares, rectangles, snake platforms, quarter platforms, ramps, these things, that thing, there's a slide here but don't use it. Of course, not to say that you are limited to only using these in your Blue Rift, but for the sake of tutorial, I'm going to stick to using these. Now you may be wondering, how, did, how would you figure that out? How would you know that these meshes are called secret? How would you know that's what the developers called them? If you have an existing mesh inside of the level, such as from a template, you can then click that mesh open its properties, go into the Static me Mesh Actor tab, 
then go into the static mesh component tab, it will say the name of the model. If we want to go to that, first off, we need to have the content browser open. Then if we go back to the properties and click the hourglass icon, it will show a little pop-up that says find object in content browser. It will then show us that exact object, which you can then see what it's called. If you use this button, it will put you in the folder that, that, that those objects are in. If you don't want to be in that folder and you want to search the entire game's assets, scroll back up and click on this folder again. The next tutorial will actually start building the level instead of going over the content browser.